I've talked about it before on the channel, but in case you've missed it elsewhere, I've been playing drums for over 20 years and playing a band called Clarkson Go. And we just released a music video for a cover we did of Harry Styles' song, As It Was. So I figured I'd take us back in time a bit and go through how we did that from recording the song to release. Due to the fact that I have some limited music production knowledge from back in the day, and our guitarist Johnny records and mixes music and audio, we decided to do everything ourselves, which is what we did with our last EP as well. After some practices where we conceived covering this song and then making our sort of punk rock changes, I dragged my electric drum kit to Johnny's apartment one day where we tracked the drums via a MIDI input into his computer. I listen to a metronome and a scratch track and then jam along. This lets us record all the drum data, make edits, change kit sounds. I mean, I'd much rather record on an acoustic kit, but that requires microphones, a sound treated location, and well, money we didn't really have to spend. And it's something that most people when they listen probably won't even realize. Once we finish the drums, then our bassist Russ comes in and tracks bass. We plugged into a small amp in Johnny's home studio and mic'd it up. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> After the bass gets completed, we move on to the guitar. Since we only have one guitarist, Johnny needs to track rhythm and lead guitars separately. He used different guitars to give them different tones. And then I'll do some harmony, uh, like some overdubs, and then we'll do all the, the, the background shape. Okay. Uh, yeah, ready. All right, here we go. Finally, we do vocals, which is always a bit of a funny trip if you don't have the headphones on listening to the track. No, it's not the... No, it's not the... Fuck yeah, the there you go. The <laughs> then Johnny spends a ton of time mixing, remixing, and mastering. This process I don't know a lot about, so I'll just leave it at, it's nitpicky. Fast forward six months and we played the song live for the first time at a gig on November 26, 2022, which was also the first show we played live since 2010. We decided we wanted to make a music video, so I conceived a simple performance video idea where we would play the song in super speed, but remain on time. We ran a test with this one day at a practice at our jam space we use. I took the song, slowed it down by half, so we played along super slow. Then you speed it up in post-production to match the proper timing of the track, so we all look like we're moving in hyperspeed, but we remain on time with the music. <laughs> When that test proved successful, we rented a space, I called in some favors, and we shot it with a very skeleton crew. Rock and roll positions. And your, uh, <laughs> dude, you want to like keep Johnny in the foreground and then like run focus to me at some point, so he's like, you know, kind of in between his headstock and head. Like, you know. I had to direct from behind the drum kit, which is a little challenging since I can't really have eyes on the monitors, but I did my best. Uh, and be rolling. rolling. Hold on. When you're good, my mood. Yep. Right. Okay, uh, sorry, one sec, I'm not good. <laughs> okay, Maddie, whenever, whenever you're ready. And play. We played the track with a metronome through the speakers in the space, and I dampened my cymbals by putting two cymbals on top of each other on each stand and then taping them together. So that way, despite playing along on the drums, very little sound continues to ring out, meaning we can hear the track and keep playing along. You can actually see two of the symbols stacked on top of each other and some of the tape in the finished video, but I figured it's so quick that it doesn't really matter. We rented the studio for five hours and set up, shot, and tore down in that time on a Sony FX3 and a Sony A7S3. 
We shot some versions in slow-mo and some at natural speed. When it came to editing, I decided the verses of the song would play out in natural speed and look normal. Then the choruses are where we'd speed the footage up. We also shot a couple takes in 120 frames per second in slow-mo, mostly so I could work in some sexy slow-mo hair flips from Russ. The first time ever I broke a string on this guitar. <laughs> And now the video is done, so you can check out the full version of the video here on our band's YouTube page. If you're wondering what else I've been up to, I've begun production on a feature film documentary for a production company. It has kept me very busy. We began production in January 2023, and in just that month, I went to Calgary, Whistler, Maui, and back to Vancouver, and we are heading to a few more locations in the next coming months. So I'm sure I will talk more about that at a later date on this channel. Till then, I will see you later, I guess. Okay, bye.